Hello, my friends. I did a video the other day trying to demonstrate uh, a rose, a fairly simple rose painting. And <laughs> it wasn't a very good quality video because I was painting flat and I had a big glare on the rose. This is it. And um, I ended up trying to edit it and I deleted the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> which was kind of frustrating, except it's not the best rose anyway. So I'm going to try again. I'm going to paint right over this because I have run out of um, pores to embellish on. Appropriate pores. I have a bunch that are have a, a slick, shiny surface or, or that are just too busy behind to, um, to make a, an embellishment worthwhile. So I'm going to paint right over this and hope I can do something nice. Um, I do want to show you this this um, embellishment I did the other day. I didn't make a video of it, but because uh, it, it took me hours. <laughs> but you can see this pour was just very blah. Um, not much happening on its own. It was just very plain. But um, it made a great background. The the plainer the the pours, the better if you're going to embellish. I think so. I'm pretty pretty pleased with how that turned out and uh so see and roses are not easy there are as many ways to paint them as there are varieties of roses and um i painted this and then i did this this is terrible <laughs> so um i'm gonna try to do kind of a meld of the two i i've painted realism stroke roses this is kind of a stroke rose <clears throat> folk art, um, anyway, all, all sorts of things. And so that I, what I want to do is kind of an impressionistic rose, which I think that one is. And that's what I'm going to give a try today. So I'm using acrylics. If you want to see some beautiful rose painting, look up David Jansen, Jansen with an E on YouTube. He does hundreds of rose painting videos, flower paintings, everything. And he is remarkable to watch. And I did buy some of his paint because um, it it's more like oil in its properties. Um, you can blend with them. They don't dry as quickly as um, as normal acrylic. So I, I'm really pleased because I'm an, I love oil painting. But it is nice to have the um, advantage of things that dry a little quicker. So let me get to work here and see if I can do something decent for you. Get some paper towel. All right, so let me cover that thing up with kind of a mix of um, red light and uh, red violet, I think it is. I'm just going to cover this thing up. Not worried about the the shape um, going out over the edges is is fine. Let's throw some some light in there. And then maybe we'll put some blue and and whoops, I meant to go in the violet, blue and violet to make a really deep, dark uh, throat of the rose and then kind of lighten your the touch and lighten out the feather up the uh, edge of it maybe deepen the this is the bowl so basically a rose is three circles the throat and then the bowl is the, is there and then um, the outer petals would be the largest circle so um, yeah, so this is um, kind of the bowl area. I'm going to have a, a dark side and a light side, cool and warmer. So let's um, we'll call this the warmer side. This will be the cooler side. Try to keep keep that in mind. So I'm going to start with the the uh, lighter, warmer side with some some yellow, 
some orange and some white. More white. I'm going to start with a big bold um, stroke there. And then kind of keeping in mind that I want this area circular. Not perfectly round, but somewhat. Um, and the beauty of these paints is, and he does this all the time, you can use your finger to kind of blend. And they're non-toxic and uh, really, <laughs> really wonderful. Okay, now let's put some, and I'm going to use this, this is a what, size 12. It's a little a little big, but I'm going to try using that for the whole um, whole painting. Put in some littler, littler uh, size petals in there. It's a little bright there. I'm going to tone it down a bit. That's good. You know, there's no there's no rules. You just kind of kind of relax and have fun with it. All right, um, we'll come back to all of this, but now I'm gonna start some outer petals. Oh, first let me finish up work on the bowl a little more on the cool side. I'm gonna go with the um, red violet, which is a cool color. Oops, I made it too blue. Go back into the, I have some blue in my brush, but going into the red violet and some white. It's pretty violet. Yeah, it's more red. That's more what I wanted. Always keeping in mind this round bowl kind of a thing. I blend the two together, the warm and the cool. Now, um, let's start on the cool side. <clears throat> and I'm going to bring some petals, the outer petals, the falling petals. in and blend them into that dark bowl area. As it comes to the center of the rose, it's going to be a little bit lighter, the petals. I have just started painting his, his style roses. I mean, I'm not very good at it. That, that one I showed you, um, the good one <laughs> was the first one I did, and I uh, it was pretty. It came out pretty good, although it did take me many many hours, and um, I was pretty pleased with it. And I thought, oh, this isn't hard, but it is hard. It takes a lot of practice to uh, to be any good at roses, and um, I have it taken a lot of classes over the years, so I have a little experience, you know, with the um, structure of a rose and all that helps having that knowledge but um, it, it's if you want to do them you really you really need to practice a lot and my problem is there's other things I like to do I like to paint animals and I'm trying to paint figures and people and whatever so I I really probably need to spend the rest of my life um, working on roses if I want to get good at them but well, that's probably not going to happen. <laughs> so, okay, now I'm going to come in here and kind of blend, mix up the shape of the petals and 
I'm gonna get a little warmer over here. And these paints kind of reconstitute themselves. That's what's such a difference between most acrylics and these. You can add a little bit of water and um, they'll come back to life. I'm kind of using the old guide I had under here, the petals I had here, some of them weren't too bad. that edge to kind of disappear. Basically they the um the petals are going to come around from the side and get a little lighter here and kind of disappear underneath the bowl. I don't always use my fingers but he does and my gosh some magic happens with his stuff so I'm giving it a try. And fill in a little metal here. You could use a oh, you could use a um a brush. Let's try that. I'll just wipe off the excess paint from my brush and just kind of blend. See if I can get a similar look with my brush as I did with a finger. Oh, it's so much easier. It's faster with the finger there. All right, now I'm going to um, put another dark petal down here. It's a little lopsided. You don't want it perfectly round, but you want kind of maintain a round shape. All right, now for some fun, let's um, lighten that up more. So I've got paint on my brush. I didn't um, clean it out. And went into the white, so I have a nice pretty pink there. And I'm going to really lighten up the front here. Bring it forward, make it more round looking. Lighten up these um, petals here a bit, just along the edge, and kind of bring it in. You can make these um, slivery, <laughs> my husband, uh, slivery petal petals that, um, you know, like you're just looking straight on it. Oh, that's too white. So let's add some I'm just playing folks. I, I it's not like I can tell you this is how it's done. Um, it just takes practice and, and playing. I'm happier with this than I was the the previous one I did. But I just love purple and orange together. Isn't that pretty? Uh, let's tap in some um, little seedy stuff in the middle there. A little round brush would be better for this, but I, I wanted to see if I could just do the whole thing with this one brush. Soften it there. Let's fix up this um, little bud I did the other day. That's not very good. And, oh, okay, why not, I'll show you um, how I make some green. I'm going to use black and yellow, not um, not blue and yellow. Or well, maybe I'll show you both, um, show you the difference, because I think I just prefer that. Here's some yellow, 
and I don't have a lot of black. And black makes a wonderful rich green. Lighten it up. We'll white. That's too much white. <laughs> It's not bad. And my my black is now well, dried out. Let me uh, rejuvenate it with a little bit of water. I don't have that much out, so that's that. I don't know if you can see that, but that's a nice dark green. Let's use that. And I just kind of like to. Um, Wiggle on leafy shapes. You don't have to be too exact. And with the dark, you can kind of paint negatively. Clean up your um, petal shapes, you know, by adding negative painting. And uh, got some leafy looking things there. Come in here with a little bit of light. Tap that on. Clean these up from the other day. They're not very good. Add a little bit of the um, flower color in your leaf is always a nice thing to do. dark. You know, I'm going to have to make some with um, blue because I'm out of uh, black. That's too bad. Or Okay. Um, yeah. Let's go ahead and make some blue, some green with um, blue and yellow. Good amount of blue. See how much brighter that is. You may not like that. So to tone that down, I'm going to take some of the red. And uh, that's the, you know, the opposite of green on the color wheel is red. And if you add that, um, you don't get mud like a lot of people say. You, it, you get a darker version of the color. So see, that's a, that's a nice red there. Um, I mean, green. <laughs> that's a green, Chris. So that was made with blue and yellow, but um, toned down with red. Now, I, I kind of like some of this pour. I don't want to cover up the whole thing, but um, enough to make it interesting. I'll go into that. that black, uh, that black mix there. Put in some, whoa, that's way too bright. Vein line there. Uh, that's no good. <laughs> Tone that down. There we go. Again, I'm just, I'm just playing. I'm going to have to do some pours so I can do some more embellishing. And uh, what else? Oh, let, let's add some more of the uh, flower color in some of these leaves to tie it all together. Just hints of it. Kind of a reflection. Lighten some up a bit. I have them pretty dark. Not all of them, make them different. The ones. The outer reaches here kind of fade away to nothing. Uh, let me I'm 
Okay. Um, I'm kind of I'm going to kind of go over what I did the other day. I do like to add a little frou frou lines um, to kind of help the viewer carry their um, carry their eye, run it around the design. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to speak intelligently, and it's not working. I am drinking a wine cooler while I paint. So I like to do squigglies. So water down. Good grief. Uh, of course, you could mix all your colors up ahead of time. But it's really fun to brush mix. Okay, well, we'll call that it. I, I like to add little squigglies, holding the um, paintbrush way back so you're nice and loose with it. And just kind of add these little doodads. That's a little thick there. I prefer to build a little thinner, but... Um, so you can see I already added some. I don't want to go too nutty with it. But it kind of, you know, carries your eye through through the painting. I wonder if I want to brighten that rose up anymore. I think I will just a little more. Just a bit. Not too much. I'm just going to pop one more rose petal kind of here. Brighten that up just a fraction. 